Good afternoon. Good afternoon as you're hopping on. Welcome, welcome. I am on the road today. Hope everyone is having, let me get myself together. Hope everyone is having a very, very blessed day. And we're going to get this thing going. Well, I hope, well, hey, in the comments, if you would, just let me know how your day is going. If you're having a great day, having a productive day. Praying for, I'm praying for you, praying for uh, the will of God for your life, praying for uh, the Lord to uh, move as he promised that he would. Absolutely, we will definitely, with everyone, please be in agreement for healing for uh, my auntie, Deborah Vinson. Uh, we, are, we set ourselves in agreement with you according to the word of God. In the name of Jesus, that by the stripes of Jesus, we receive total wholeness. We receive total healing. Hello to my mother in love. Hello to my mother. All right. And everyone that is on here, thank you for being on here. We are talking about, uh, Tammy said, Friday Eve. We, we want to get to them weekends. I don't blame you, Tammy. Uh, we're, we're talking about God has a plan for your life. As you can see, I am on, I, I think I'm going on tour. I'm, I'm ready to do some different things with these noontime nuggets and not just sit at a desk, um, but just to do some something different and uh, keep bringing the word, obviously, but, uh, but also to um, make sure that we keep it fresh. So, uh, so anyway, God does have a, a plan for your life. Um, it is so, so important for us to, to recognize that, to know that. I always say this, it doesn't matter what your age is, um, regardless of how, how uh, young you are or, or if you're older in life, it does not matter. God's calls uh, are not without repentance. He is definitely interested in you just being, becoming number one. We said that yesterday. He's interested in you becoming the man or the woman that he created for you to be. And then here's what's going to happen. As you are becoming who he has created you to be, you will absolutely, positively begin to see the doors open to do what he has called for you to do, created for you to do. So Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, again, is our foundational scripture. It says, for we are his workmanship. We are his masterpieces, as we've talked about, and we are created. You are created in Christ Jesus. That, that one decision in your life, that one decision to, uh, to receive Jesus as the Christ, that one decision to receive Jesus as the Messiah, the true Messiah to come, that one decision for you to believe that he is who he said he is, and that you have made to make him the Lord of your life. That's so important, y'all. I, I have to stress that uh, probably every day because it's a part of our salvation that he is not, he is your savior, number one, and he is also your Lord, number two. So in that decision to do that, you are now in Christ Jesus. Right now, you are in Christ Jesus. And what does that mean, though? What does it mean to be in Christ Jesus? It means that you begin to, to identify with him. It means that you begin to look like him. That's what that means in, in even plainer language. You begin to, when I say look like him, you begin to live like him. All right? You begin to live like him. And so that is the identity of, of being in Christ. It means that when people look at you, what should happen? They should recognize the Jesus in you. When they look at the, your love walk, they should recognize the Jesus in you. When they look at how you forgive people, they, it, should be, it should be almost, it should be like uh, amazing to them that you're able to walk in forgiveness towards someone else. It should be an amazement to them how you love the poor. It should be an amazement to them how you give of what you have to help those that are in need. It should amaze them. It, it, it's beyond you, just you. It's like, man, that, that person must, must 
uh, have some some other belief system because I've never met anyone like her. I've never met anyone like him. Uh, just the kindness, uh, the love, the joy that you have in life. I'm still talking about being in Christ Jesus. The joy that you have when you walk into work and everybody is complaining. You know, they're they're like, how how is it that you can work in this company or work in this environment? and still have peace, still have joy. They're amazed at how different you are from everyone else. That's being in Christ Jesus. Now, so many people are calling themselves Christians, calling themselves followers of Jesus Christ. But if them calling themselves followers of Jesus Christ and it's turning people away from Jesus, then they're not really identifying with Jesus. So that's just fake and phony, right? I mean, that's what it is. So we're talking about you are his workmanship. You are in Christ Jesus. You identify with Christ Jesus. You are living like Jesus. You're loving like Jesus. You're forgiving like Jesus. You're giving like Jesus. You're sacrificing like Jesus. This is the lifestyle of a real follower of Jesus Christ. And that's what this is all about. But he says this, when you're in Christ Jesus, you are created for something. What are you created for? The, the scripture says you are created for good works. There are some works. I, 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 you know, it, again, what is it? It is about expanding God's kingdom. That's, that's what the works are about. It's about touching the lives of your cousins and your aunts and your uncles. It's about touching the lives of nieces and nephews, of your children, of your spouse. It's about touching the lives of of people you work with, people that are in your community, uh, people that, that may be your neighbors. That's what it's about. You are created for good works. It's about being a part of, watch this, a local church, being a part of a local church where you are able to uh, come together as a group. Because th there's a lot, of, a lot of thoughts out there, well, you know, uh, I don't have to be in the church. What? No, no. Going to heaven has nothing to do with you being a part of the church. That's not the requirement of eternal life. But there is some there is scriptural basis that says we are more powerful together than we are individually. And so as we come together, then now we are multiplying our power through agreement to touch even more people. So this is why we come together. We also come together to edify one another. In other words, when you come to church, somebody, somebody, whether it's the pastor, it's not just the pastor. Let me just, because we're going to tear down these sacred cows. It's not just the pastor. Well, the pastor didn't speak, didn't, I didn't get a chance to talk to the pastor today. Well, that's fine. Did you talk to another member of Christ's body to, to build you up, to speak into your life, to to edify you, to speak encouraging words, prophetic words. Uh, did you did you have that kind of interaction? That's what should happen. I'm all over the place, but it's only because the Spirit of God is just leading me there. So anyway, so you are his workmanship, right? Number one, you were created in Christ Jesus. All right, we know what that means to identify with Jesus for good works. So there's some things you are supposed to do in your life and it says this, that God prepared beforehand those good works. So it's already established. It's already established uh, in the spirit realm of what you're supposed to do. And so here is our, our huge um, revelation that we talked about yesterday. As you conform to who you are supposed to be in Christ Jesus, the doors that lead to those good works will appear. In other words, you will be able to see clearly as to what is the next step for my life. You will be able to see clearly as to what is the direction for my life. You will be able to see clearly as to the decisions that need to be made. How does that come? Through your transformation, through you conforming to the image of who God created you to be. The reason that we miss so many opportunities in life is because we are still trying to live or still choosing, not trying, we're still choosing to live the way that we wanted to live in the past 
Yet at the same time, what are we doing? We're looking for, we're looking for God's opportunities and we're missing them because our mindset has not been transformed or changed, all right? So yesterday, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. Yesterday, we talked about what the old things are in your life that have passed away. What are those old things? First and foremost, it was the corrupted way of being and behaving. That's the old you. The old things have passed away. In other words, what the word of God is declaring over you right now is that who you used to be and how you used to act, that's passed away. That, that's no more. No more. No more of that. No more of that life. And then it goes on to specifically say how we were acting according to the lusts and the desires that spring from being lied to. And I expounded a little bit yesterday on the fact that we've been lied to. You know, uh, we've been lied to, as, as I said, the world has lied to us. Uh, the thing that sometimes even in our community that we're so proud of, the streets, they've lied to us. The television, the media, they've lied to us. Uh, social media lies to us every day. All these things that we're taking into our minds, it's lying to us. It's telling us a way to be and a way to live that's not the truth. And so what does God desire? He says, you're a new creature. In other words, a new creation. You, you, did, you, did you know that? Did you know that when you got saved, the, your spirit man, now you're going to look in the mirror and see the same person, but your spirit man is a new creation. The real you is created anew. You are, and I, I know, it's like, okay, I still feel the same. I still look around and I'm still in the same house. I still look in the mirror and I see the same person. I even still think like I did yesterday, but the spirit, the inner man, the real you has been created anew. Now, what is this new creature going to begin to do? This new creation, this new creation that you are, you'll be going to begin a new life of being. In other words, Christianity really is not about doing, it is, a, it is about being. Religion is all about doing. Following Christ is about who you become. And then in who you become, now you can do what you're supposed to do. See, what religion does is it skips that step. Religion says, okay, you're saved now. Here's, what I, here's what's expected of you. Dress like this, look like this, don't wear this, you can wear that, the makeup, no makeup. See, that's religion. It skips a whole step of dealing with the heart of the person and goes right into the rules. And, and what does God say? No, that's not my way. That's man's way of doing things. God says, I, I want you to start off how? being transformed. You know what? You might still wear some of the same stuff. That's because he's working on you. But as you are growing, you will begin to see that things begin to change. So this new creature that God created you to be, it's a new life. It's a new way of being. It's being in a new kingdom that, in other words, now you begin to live out your righteousness that you really are on the inside. You begin to live out the holiness that you are that you are on the inside. So we are talking about what? We're talking about God's plan for your life. See, you thought I was going to tell you what you're supposed to do. No, God's plan for your life is who you're supposed to become. That's what we're talking about. So let's just pick up here tomorrow. My time is up. And uh, I don't know where I'll be tomorrow, but we'll see. Uh, my time is up for today. I love you all. I'm praying for you all. As always, will you please, please, please share this on your, on your personal page? It would be a blessing. Uh, I hope that this was a blessing to you. I hope that you see in these teachings that, you know what, uh, I, I'm, I'm hearing something that I'm us I haven't heard maybe before, that this is, this is about a true relationship with the Lord and not just about what I do 
uh, all the time. So I love you. God bless you. Have a great, great Thursday. Bye-bye.